And now I'm live. So, before you walk into the room. <sighs> Hello again. Welcome back. Bless you. <laughs> bless you. Bless you. Uh, bless you. Actually, I don't. I just need to. Oh, I can hear myself. Hang on. Because there's nothing worse than being able to hear yourself on camera just quietly. It's, it's a bit, it's not my favourite thing. Anyway, how are we all this afternoon? Welcome back to day two of the Great uh, International Craft Show. Uh, run through craft alive uh, today I am on nataliemay.com.au we have got some awesome specials and that includes hello Alison Bevis hello Naomi uh, that includes Tim Holtz products at 15% off and also stencils at 15% off and Lindy's products at 15% off so today I thought I would use I'd make, I'll just do some super simple back to basic techniques using distress colours, distress oxide ink pads in particular. And not that one. And have a bit of a play doing something a little bit more vintage. I do have some worn lipstick and some crackling campfire here as well, so I'm just going to keep those in the emergency pile. The other things I've pulled out here in front of me is I've got a big pile of stencils that I've just pulled off the shelf. I've got some Tim Holtz Dead People. I have a little bag of those here. Actually, it's quite a big bag. I have some Hessian. I have some cheesecloth. And I have some stamps. So I just thought I'd do some lovely, simple techniques using these. So you'll find all of these products for today only on special on nataliemay.com.au uh, and the prices will automatically be discounted at the checkout. All right, let's get into it. Hello, Susan. So I have got some plain cardstock here, nice and simple. This is the cardstock, A5 cardstock, that you can purchase from nataliemay.com.au. You get a pack of 10 including envelopes, I think for $3.50 or $4.50 or something super inexpensive. Uh, and I want to make today some card fronts. So to make some card fronts, which are the bits that I stick onto a 6x4 card, I take these pieces and trim them down. Hello Merle. Uh, welcome back. So I'm just going to cut a couple of these up before I turn them into the finished card so that they make an Australian size card. Right, that'll do for the time being. Now I just went and grabbed a whole heap of these off the shelf. Random stencils. Stencils are 15% off today. That is awesome for you. Uh, I'm going to start with taking some Distress Oxides. And I'm going to have a bit of a play here with some of these more vintage colours. I'm using the Uniquely Creative Blending Brush and using that to apply a nice colour to the background. So I've got something really nice and vintage. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm not wanting to put anything to bright on these cards, I'm wanting to keep it pretty low key. So I'm just going to do this whole background in this nice light brushed corduroy. Now I'm going around in, in little circles, moving backwards and forwards, and I'm more than happy to have a more of an, um, a rough sort of look here with the distressing because I'm going to put a stencil over the top in a minute and add some little bits and pieces. So that works quite nicely for me. I'm going to put some depth around the outside by going over it again. 
As you can see, I'm using my puppy training pad in the background. And the cool thing about that is it takes off any excess. And I can, oops, let's test that because I know I just re-inked that. Um, and I can put some, actually, you know what would be smart? I'm going to grab my, oh, that's not very clean. Neither's that, but it's better. So let's use one of these mats because these are actually ideal for inking. That's better. That's much, much, much smoother. So this is one of the uh, craft mats. Messy mat. So going around in a circular motion, I always start off the paper before I then move onto the paper. So my technique remains the same all the way around. So I've got this really distressed edge going on now. And I'm going to pull out one of these stencils. So I have got the Crafters Workshop Slimline stencil here in Slimline Half Tones. I thought that I might pop this one smack bang about there and then go over the top with another brown. So this one is Walnut Stain. And I'm holding it nice and firmly with my fingers and pushing the colour around the page to create a simple and easy background. Now I could tape this down to my surface, um, but I don't find a need for that at this stage. I know that I can get a really nice coverage if I just hold it nice and firm and be confident in what I am doing. Voila, oh that looks good. Now I'm going to extend out the spots on this side because the stencil doesn't go right to my edges. And look at that. And it actually matches up beautifully. Oh, missed a bit. It's really, really easy to line up. So there you go, that one looks pretty great. And that's just using three shades of brown and a stencil. Now I've got all of this goodness going on here. So I'm gonna put this one aside and I'm going to use a water spray to wet this and then I'm gonna stamp with it. So I'm just gonna spray it, then onto a piece of paper, turn it, flip it, stamp with it. Some paper towel, give it a squish. And what's happening, of course, is that ink is transferring over to my stencil. To the paper, and I'm creating a really cool background. So I'm gonna put that aside because I can work with that a little later. Shazam. Let's get my mouse out of the way. All right, let's do another one. This one. Uh, okay, I want to this time do something. Yeah, I will. This time I'm going to go in with shabby shutters. So I'm using a clean blending tool and I'm going to go straight on here. Don't need the blending tool actually. I'm just going to go ink pad straight to paper fingerprints and all grab some ink and just touch up those corners so a little tip that I quite often use is a post-it note so I don't get ink on my fingers and transfer uh, but I can't reach them so I'm not going to Okay. 
So the next stencil, what shall we use? I've got a few different ones here. I'm going to go with the Paper Rose Scandy Leaves. This is a, a bit of an old faithful of mine. I do love this because it is really quite a universal stencil. I'll go away this time. Right, might put, let's see what speckled egg over the top looks like. Clean blending tool. Now I'm lining this up as straight as I can. And now when I'm doing it, I'm going to follow the way that the stencil kind of runs. Hello, Linda. Yeah, it is an inky finger sport. No matter what, Merle's just commented, no matter how hard she tries, she always ends up with inky fingers. Yeah, it is part of it. So I am working with one little area at a time. So these Distress inks are all 15% off for today only. So if you don't have these particular colours in your stash, I highly recommend them. The, the four browns that I'm using in particular, the Brushed Corduroy, the Vintage Photo, the Gathered Twigs and the Walnut Stain are easily my most used colours. In fact, Gathered Twigs and Vintage Photo, I've had my Distress Oxides for years, since, ever since they came out. Um, there we go, look at that. I love the way they sit on top of each other. That, looks, that works really well. Uh, so yes, highly recommend that. Speckled Egg's a beautiful colour. Um, I'm just going to pop that aside and I'll come back to it. But I want to transfer this ink because waste not, want not. And go straight over the top of that. Yeah, pretty. And that's actually worked quite well. Let's keep on moving. Um, I reckon that's our courier driver pulling up out the front, Lou. Okay, this time I'm going to go with the Paper Rose Cog stencil. Um, or maybe not, it just disappeared. Uh, this one has, this is like an old faithful of mine. I really like this. It's been around for years. Um, and it is well and truly one of my favourite, favourite stencils to use. Okay. I'm going to go in with a dark walnut stain straight onto the white. So a firm hand on top. And round circular motion, nice even pressure. Just like that. So how's everybody's day going today? Hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm going to add another colour over the top of this in a minute. There's no reason why I can't blend a couple of colours together. So what I want to do is put down this nice rich walnut stain brown in the background. And this is quite effortless as well. It's not taking any effort at all for me to do this um, and I really really like that and that's the bonus about using distress oxides with with these blending brushes and stencils so now I'm going to add a little brushed corduroy um, just in a few of the light bits on the edges that I may have missed like that Oh, 
Oops, no. Oh, looks good though. Let's line that up a bit. There we go, and I just want to get some up in this area right here. And that makes me happy. Look at that, fabulous. Again, let's spray this baby. Very, very cool. I love that. Put that aside. Plain stencil. So that's using the Paper Rose Cogs and Gears. Um, let's do some more. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to whip up some little cards once I'm done and do some layering of... Um, some embellishments and bits and pieces. Um, Dark Room Door, another fabulous Australian company, has got this medium sized stencil, and these are all friend words. Um, this time I'm going to go in with Vintage Photo. And I'm going to do that background again, just like I did with that first card. I'm going to go around in a circle. So you can use lots of different blending tools to apply your ink. For me, I'm wanting to do this sort of rough blendy technique. You can use the Ranger, Ranger blending tools with the removable, removable Velcro pads. They do work really well. Uh, I like using these because I like the handle. It's, it's kind of effortless um, and it does actually give me a really nice finish. So I go all the way around, like I said before, half, half the ink on, half the ink off. Um, so then I can build my colour up all the way around. So this time I'm going to put, so that was vintage photo. Um, Louise, can you get the front door please? Um, then this one is walnut stain on the edges just to intensify those edges uh, and going all the way around. So now it's got this really, really lovely, rich, rich background going on here. And I really like that. Rich, rich edge. Okay. There we go. Now, it looks a little rough in the middle and that's okay because what's going to happen is when I put the stencil over the top, and I stencil my words on. It's going to, and I'm going to use this same walnut stain to do that. It's going to look great. It's going to be that same sort of colour. So I'm going to go back over here. Like that. I'm just creeping my fingers down and moving all the way around. I'm going to show you a couple more quick techniques for a background with oxides and then we're going to embellish. So Tim Holtz products today uh, exclusively online only. You will find them at 15% off. You will also find stencils. Look at that. Stencils at 15% off. And you will find Lindy's products at 15% off. That looks fantastic. Now, this one I'm not going to worry about inking and stamping with it because, of course, the words will be back to front. So I'm just going to baby wipe that one. Um, there we go. And this time we are going to do, I'm going to do some brushed corduroy and I'm going to go straight 
down onto my mat. Now, it's not showing up on camera, but I'm giving it a really, really good ink. I'm going to now spray it with water. And we're going to smush it. And we've got that really lovely, rich brush corduroy ink going right over there. And I'm going to pop that aside to dry for a minute because um, this is great. I don't want to smush those bits. I really, really like that. And then we will go in and add, I'll do another colour. Um, I might wipe that down. Speckled egg. Now I'll go all the way across the speckled egg across the bottom. And then I'm going to put shabby shutters right alongside it. So I've got two colours right next to each other. I'm going to wet and then I'm going to smush. Just like that. Oh, and I've got a little bit of bonus paint off my mat. So because these colours are quite light, they do look pretty great. Um, but yes, they have come in quite light on my mat. But the good thing is, is I can continue to build on them. So I'm going to add some more. So I've got some more of the speckled egg. Give it a, give it a spray. Now, it's not watercolour paper or anything like that. It's just the paper that I use to make cards with. Nothing more than that. And I'm building on that. Now, I'm going to add some colour over the top of that one as well. And I do love the way that they layer. Very, very cool. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to wipe that off onto my puppy training pad and let's have a look at some of these cards so we've got this one here this is the uh, two browns in the background with the stenciling over the top let's make something out of that um, now it's got lots of words on it already so I'm going to grab a piece of cheesecloth and I've got some Lindy sprays here so I've got this lovely gossamer gold which is a gorgeous gold, and I'm going to spray it. So again, another awesome thing about Lindy's, of course, is because it is a dye, you can dye fabric. And it has a fantastic permanency to it as well. So I'm going to grab that, just quickly dry it off, and it's taken this lovely piece of cheesecloth to... This gorgeous shimmery gossamer gold. So the Lindy sprays, I'm going to have a bit of a play with them through a stencil in my next live. I'm going to do some really lovely cool backgrounds, I think. That sounds like a plan. But I'll show you um, what you need to do to mix them up, etc. And that'll be at 3.30 today. An hour and a half Adelaide time. Now that's completely dry, I can pull it. No, it's not completely dry. It's nearly dry. I love the idea of just bunching it up like that. You can pull it apart and give it a real distressed finish, which would be much better if I dried it properly. Um, and I'm just going to pop that down there. Okay, before I do that, do I want to add any word, other words to it? I've got some other stamps here. No, I don't think I do because if we do that, then it gets a bit messy. So let's use a stapler. I've got my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher. And I'm attaching it to there. I'm going to add some splatters of gossamer gold. And then in a moment, I'm going to put that aside to dry and I'm going to uh, add some P 
people, some Tim Holtz people. So I'm just gonna let that sit and dry for a second, air dry, and come to my next one. So this one is using the Paper Rose stencil. I'm just gonna trim that little edge bit off because that annoys me. Uh, and for this one, because we've got a busy image, we don't want to do anything else. We don't want to add anything else to it that's too busy. So I have got some ancient, super ancient Google on paper, otherwise known as a dictionary. And I'm going to do that. And because the stapler is today's choice, I'm going to go staple, staple. And I'm going to layer up a few more pieces. Very handy little tool, this one. those bits off, snip those bits off. Now I want to add a little bit of edging to this. It seems it's fantastic and I'm really happy with it but I think that it could do with a little bit of an edge. So just a little, just a little fine dark edge on it. Oh, you. Um, and just a friendly reminder, the Super Studio is actually closed today, so while we're filming, but um, because everything happens all at once. But the, um, there we go, going around like that. Radio. So just adding a little bit of ink all the way around. It's just created a nice little frame, and in a moment, I'm going to be adding a um, one of my people onto that. I don't want to add anything else to it. I've just put a little bit of ink around and a staple because that's finished it off quite nicely. Now, this is the one that I used with the shabby shutters and speckled egg, right? So I like it. I think I might make up some splatters using speckled ink egg on this one to finish it off. So I'm going to go straight onto here, onto my mat and grab a paint brush paintbrush. I want a skinny paintbrush. There we go. There's one. And I can grab some water and liquid fire that and I can add some splatters. So the really great thing is, is you can also watercolor. Do like a watercolor technique with these and you'll get a really cool finish. The I'll bring it up to camera. Because what happens is, of course, because it is distressed oxides, they kind of oxidize and they get this really fantastic little finish. So I can do exactly the same thing with, with shabby shutters. Pop a little splatter or two onto there. And I'll now have a paint that I can use. All right, so I'm just going to pop that aside to dry and it gets a really, really interesting finish. And I'm going to add some stamping on this one as well, but I do need to let that dry just a fraction. And then this very first one that we did, I'm going to add some Hessian to it. Hessian makes a excellent, excellent um, embellishment, especially on masculine pages and vintage projects. Um, so we have these packs of Hessian here. They just need to be loosened up a little. So I'm just giving it a bit of a rundown. And now I'm going to snip it up there, thin that down a bit. And I like a distressed hessian. So I'm just going to take the edges off that and staple that to my project like so. Okay, 
Okay, instant embellishment. Okay, now, there we go. And I'm going to shorten that. And then I've got a quick little background ready to go, ready for an embellishing session. Now, those ones that I stamped and smushed earlier look good. So let's add some stamping over the top of this. I'm going to go with that and that. So let's go with my We All Make Choices stamp set. So this one is one that I have designed with these lovely little leaves on it. And what I want to do is stick that onto there. Now I'm going to stamp with it. And go layer. Oh yeah, that looks great. Now this time I'm going to go just one end. Ink pad straight onto there so it's a beautiful rich brown um, and I've got a bit of over stamping there because I was being a little bit um, lazy one will call that so let's have a bit of a play with this see what else I can do uh, I'm gonna add some green let's do it in green over the top I do love the way that Distress Oxides stamp. They are rich, they are creamy, they give a fantastic impression. Um, and what I've done here is added a colour over the top. So it's now got this shading thing going on. Shading effect is the correct terminology. And now I will do the same thing with brush corduroy, which is slightly more yellow based. And it's oh, it looks so good. I don't. I suspect it's not showing up all that great on camera, but it does. In a minute, I'll bring it up to camera for you to have a bit of a look. And I've got all these layered leaves now. These gorgeous layered reeds, I should say. So this is an image that I hand drew. I'm just going to commit to this now. And this is probably one of the very first stamps I actually designed because I always wanted something that was going to give this effect. Now, just ignore that bit. But can you see the layered colours? You can see the green in, in there as well. We can see all of these lovely layers. Even though that I've got these lines through here, the good thing about that is I'm going to cover that up with some hessian. So I'm going to... But instead of using it as hessian, as a piece, I'm going to use the strands. By pulling them away. And then using my stapler to anchor them to the page. and then I've got something that's a little bit more earthy a little bit more rugged I can grab this stray piece that I've just found here oh no I can't that's too short I was going to tie a knot but I'm going to pull another piece of my hessian off And tie that off. And then I'll finish all of these off. So I've created backgrounds, I'm now building embellishments. This is excellent texture to put on a page. Love it. All right, let's go back to this one. 
I want to add a few leaves now. So I have got here my hand drawn leaves stamp and I'm going to use I'm going to use this one because this one is a open leaf. And the hand drawn leaves is going to be the perfect match over the top there. So I need to do it in similar sort of coloring. So I'm going to go in with that speckled egg. Now I did re-ink all of these prior to using them. So I do know that that's going to be nice and juicy and it's put a really lovely shadowed blue over the top of I don't think it's showing up but gosh it looks so good um, over the top and then I'm going to take this little one which is a very similar image but it has an open leaf and I'm going to do that in walnut stain so I want a really strong bold brown this time stamp them at different heights so that they look like they are a different stamp all the way across um, and then I will touch up this little bit with my scissors or an ink or a black pen okay so that's your hand drawn leaves I do like it but I will trim it Problem solved. All right, powering along here. I'm on a roll, let's keep going. So this is one of the other smushy backgrounds that I did. What can I stamp on this one? I can stencil on this one, let's stencil. Let's use, have you guys seen these from Tim Holtz? These are his Elements Collection stencils. Um, these have got fantastic numbers in them. So you have got a full set of 12 stencils. And uh, in my favourite typewriter, I can't get it out of the packer. In my favourite typewriter sort of stenciling font. And I can do... Like, look at that. What a great, what a great stencil. A very underestimated stencil. So this time I'm going to go in with, actually I'm going to use Vintage Photo. And I'm just going to leave it as it lies. Yeah, and I'm going to layer up a few different numbers in different colours. So that one is the vintage photo. Now I'll do brushed corduroy lightly over the top. And overlapping and coming off the page a little. Beautiful. Put that aside to clean. Or oh, the number, let's do a number nine in here. And the number nine, I will go in with gathered twigs. I'm going to mix all of these different browns. And I just re-inked that just before going on to camera, so it's super juicy. Um, I think it needs a, a seven up here. I'm going to use that same one. So if you had a particular event, birthday, um, and you can extend these numbers too. It's not going to take very much to fill those gaps. 
Right, I'm going to do something a little bit of risque and go walnut stain. I'm going to come in this way with my number eight. And it's just creating these really awesome shapes over this creative background. And I'm going to pop some of this down here as well. And finishing it off with... There we go. It's got a plus symbol. Oh, I like that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Hey, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. Um, I really quite like that. What it does need... Is a little bit of this. A little bit of a touch on the side in some darker brown to create a frame to help tie it all together. So super duper easy to do. Oh, sorry girls, I'm not watching the comments. I'm, I'm deep, deep in the rabbit hole of creating here and I haven't been watching what you were saying. So I'm just gonna leave that sit there. And now that I've looked at this one I did earlier, I think that actually needs the same. I feel like it needs a bit of a brown frame all the way around. What do you think? Let's give it a little regular bink. It's just an ever so slight touch to to add a little bit of an edge. Oh, that's better. Right, what haven't I done? We've got that one. We've got that one. We've got that one. I think that one might need a bit of an edge as well. Just around, giving it a little wriggle. That's better. That one and that one. We've got that piece of hessian. We've got our book paper on there and we have that one there. Right on. Let's pop some of these guys away and pull out some. Oh, can you see? Can you see that beautiful gold? I feel the need to add that to all of them, but. But knowing when to stop is important, isn't it? So I'm going to add it to a couple of them, you know, just because. So I like to take the nozzle off and just give it a little bit of a tap. And this one I'm just focusing on my drips going up the book paper. That one certainly doesn't need it. Got plenty going on there already. That one could do with a little... Dipping my nozzle into the bottle and then just tapping the nozzle just to get the ink off. And stopping Natalie, put the lid on, put it away. All right, let's have a look at our Tim Holtz. I call them Tim Holtz dead people. That's essentially what they are. But they are the Tim Holtz dolls, paper dolls. Um, excellent little bits, little things. You can put them on everything. I'm going to see if I've got some little tiny ones in here anywhere. I did have them separated into sizes, but apparently I've picked up the big bag. That one might work. Um, I do have a bag somewhere of little people. Little as in like the little size dolls. 
but these are excellent because you can do so many things with them you can color them you can stamp on them you can do all sorts i'm just going to have a look and see if i can find my small bag So we're just going to have to have a bit of a look through here and see what we can find. Some smaller size ones to fit on a project. I'm just going to put them all on a piece of paper here so they're easy to put, a, put back in the bag. But these are really handy if you've got a journal page you want to do, something a little different, something a little edgy. I know they're not to everybody's liking, um, and that's okay, but they do make a very clever little embellishment for a project. Um, if you have to make a card for somebody in their, uh, in their older years, then these are really nice to put on those cards. Um, and there's all sorts of demographics. So there are young, there are old, there are male, there are female, there are all sorts of bits and pieces in here. Let's go that one and that one, right, let's see what we can do. Some of these don't need anything at all except for a sentiment. Um, and for a sentiment, I have got out my small talk. Again, I've got my snarky small talk and I've just got my normal small talk. These little stickers are fantastic. So for this one here, I don't want to put anything else on it except for I'm going to put on something a little bit witty and funny and I'm going to colour it before I do. Right, this one down here is kind of me. I've got a dirty brush here, meaning it's still got a little bit of brown on it. So I'm just going to colour that with my Distress Oxide, take it, peel it off and I need to trim it because I don't like these bits on the side. And this little sticker says, listen, before I had my coffee, I didn't know how awesome I was going to be today either. There you go. Finishing off with a couple of more little staples for embellishments. And that is a lovely quick little card ready to gift to whoever you like. Tick. Done. Uh, let's go with another. I reckon this time I might pop... Do I want to do some more hessian on this one? So this time I'm going to take my hessian and trim it. This is the one that I shredded all those pieces off of. And I'm going to make a little banner out of it. So I'm going to go cut a little bit, you know, a little bit, a little triangle out the end. And I feel the need to offset that a fraction and I'm going to staple it in the middle. Best way to stick it down with a stapler and I will use one of these little little smarty pants things. How about, <sighs> coffee keeps me going until it's acceptable to drink wine. I'm seeing a pattern here. And I'm gonna cut this one in half, half on the bottom, half on the top. And I'm going to grab a couple more staples to stick those on because they don't generally stick very well to hessian, the stickers. I could choose to glue it, but I'm actually finding it very handy with a stapler. And then a stapler becomes an awesome embellishment.
Okay, tick, love that. Yeah, so some of these little stickers, um, I'm just using my personal stash and Naomi has just mentioned that some of them has have sold out. Um, and that there's something that I've got some more in transit, some more coming. So, so stress less about that. There will be more on the way. Right, I think I might pop this guy on here. Or actually, he might be better on the cogs one and I might pop her here. So let's make a, oh yeah, I've got time. I'm gonna make a quick paper flower to stick underneath her. How do we do that? We do it the easy way with circles. So I'm gonna go with one, two, three, four. And it's nothing more than cutting a circle and it's just a rough circle like that. Then the next circle is going to be bigger. So you can jump online to nataliemay.com.au and today you are going to find Tim Holtz products, stencils and Lindy's Gang products all at 15% off. Plus there are Dina Wakely gloss sprays and Tim Holtz distress glazes. Uh, about 20 a little bit over 20 percent off um, we've popped those in our show specials category as well so you can find all of those items online at nataliemay.com.au our no judgment postage special is back again where you can purchase uh, where you can collate all of your orders together and what that means is you pay postage on your first order See what I've done there? I've stapled all these little circles together. And I'm going to give it a quick spray with this lovely gossamer gold. Soften them and squish them around. Um, yes, yeah, so you can easily collate all your orders together. So if you ordered yesterday, you can order again today. And for a small picking fee, we will put them all together for you. And you can, uh, and they'll be posted on Monday after the weekend. If you live locally, uh, your order will be ready for collection from Wednesday. We are popping your orders all aside, ready for you to pick up on Wednesday if you live locally. If you accidentally choose no judgment at the checkout before paying the postage, that's okay, you can add it to your next order. All right, so I've made my little paper flower here. It's nothing more than a little range of a little ream of circles and I'm going to staple that on I'm going to tape her glue her down there with a lot of glue and then over this little messy bit in the middle normally I would ink the edges of all of that and I just totally forgot about that I'm going to add this little sticker on here, I'm just going to ink it, and it says, sorry I'm late, but I didn't want to come. Um, which, going by the look on this girl's face, kind of suits it. And I'm going to split it, cut it up into three, and layer it over the top there. And I can scrunch these up a bit as they dry. So we've just got another quick and simple little card, a little bit of layering. These would have been much better if I'd inked around the edges, I have to admit that. Sorry about that. Right, finally we're going to do this one and I think I'm just going to stick him on. I'm just going to stick him down. But he does need a witty sentence. So this one here. I was going to give you a nasty look, but I see you already have one. <laughs> That's super funny. Cut off those ends bits, end bits, 
and we'll just pop it straight across the middle there. This one here, this is the one where I stapled on that scrunched piece of hessian. So a couple of things I can do, I've got the old girls here with their little dresses on, which I kind of like because that one says friendship across here and you can see that. Let's do that. Actually, I feel like it's not big enough, to be honest. It needs to be a bit bigger. No. No. Too big. Did that one already. Let's commit. Oh, no, then maybe we can go with that one there. I kind of like him. Oh no, that works. Right, let's glue her down. Let's commit. With our little weird umbrella. Foam tape would have been ideal. But I didn't grab that. And then I need to find a phrase about friendship. Okay, here we go. Not the same. But I'm just a girl standing in front of a salad asking for it to be a donut. many a day like that and then that's going to sit across there okay another cute little card done 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 all right oh no I didn't do this one god I've made a hell of a mess here today so on this one I really do need to do something Thing witty. He does look kind of cute there, doesn't he? All right, I'm not going to do anything on that one. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it there with a witty little phrase, and then we're done. Radio. Um. So. I'm just here's one here. Um nataliemay.com.au you will find all of the things that I have used here today. You will also find a ton of amazing specials that are only valid for today. So what that means is you oops is that tomorrow I'm going to be having a new special and today you can take advantage of Tim Holtz stencils and Lindy's products at 15% off and now my stapler has just had a tantrum so you can catch you can get all of those things online today Tomorrow will be a brand spanking new special that you need in your life. So I look forward to um, tempting you with those goodies then. But for today, here we go. Voila, I like it. Today we've made some fabulous little cards using Distress Oxides in shabby shutters, brushed corduroy, walnut stain, speckled egg, gathered twigs, and vintage photo. We've kept it super simple with some really basic colors and some amazing stencil techniques. So we've got this card here. We've got this one here with some of these gorgeous speckles of gold on it with the Lindy's. We have a little bit of a masculine one we have got the girly one here with the paper flowers. 
This one is a little bit younger and a bit more modern with these big bold stencil numbers on it. And something a little bit more edgy with the reeds and the stapled on hessian. So quite a few different cards there, simple techniques. I hope I didn't make it look hard. There are lots of fun things here happening. Um, jump online to nataliemay.com.au and I look forward to seeing you back here in an hour's time for the last live Facebook of the day. We're going to play with some more Lindy's products today. All right, I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.